It's a common saying here that every Czech is a musician, but the Czechs are also well known for being artists in all fields. One of the most famous Czech artists alive today is David Czerny, a sculptor who often works in large-scale pieces, public art, and kinetic sculpture. He also has a sardonic, and some would say a wicked, sense of humor, with London buses that grunt while doing push-ups, dead horses, and much more. Today we're going to take a tour of the 22 works by David Czerny in the city limits of Prague. A city is much more than just a collection of buildings. It's a location, it's a history, it's a culture, it's ideas and ideals, and a city is also, most importantly, the people in it. This is Prague Times, the podcast that takes a look at the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. With more than a thousand years of history, there's a lot to talk about. We'll talk about the past of Prague, but we'll also talk about the city as it is today, future plans for the city, and much more. It's Prague then, Prague now, and Prague later. And this is Prague Times. There are 22 of Czerny's works here in Prague and a number of different routes you could take to see them all. Now I'm going to take my cue from the davidchernytour.com website and start with the sculpture furthest southeast, then head north and west through the city center, cross the river, and then continue west through Prague 5 and finally ending out in Studolki. That website claims it should take six hours or so to get in everything. We're going to divide this up into three different parts. The outlying areas, the city center, and then things in Prague 5. You could try and do this all in one go, or you could divide it up into sections. For example, you could see the 12 in the city center easily in a single day. So we start with part one, the outlying areas, and three sculptures. The first one is called In Utero. This 2009 work was originally installed on the busy corner of Dloha Street at Masta before it was moved to its current location. It's a six meter tall statue of a naked pregnant woman letting it all hang out. And also, if you want to, you can crawl up in there if that's your thing. It's made of reflective stainless steel layers and it sits now on top of a small rise out at Galleria Golf Hostivaj on the Prague 10, Prague 15 line. This is a real golf course with a 12-hole section and a 6-hole section, a driving range, a beach volleyball court, and an AstroTurf sport area for football, floorball, and other sports. But it's also an art gallery with most of the items outside on the grounds. Tierney's In Utero is just one of the 13 outdoor artworks on site. There's also a restaurant called Green Bistro, a branch of the wine food market, and two spots for the well-regarded Hostivage Brewery. One near the entrance and another one out at the east end of the park. And one of the sculptures by another artist is out there as well. The golf course also has massage and babysitting services, so honestly, you could make a whole day of it if you wanted to. There's a parking lot and an electric car charging station, so driving is an option. You can get there on public transportation by taking bus 125 from the Skalka metro station, which is the green line, line A, to the Bolonska stop, and the 125 also goes from the Smikovska Nadraji bus station in Prague 5. The next item is London Booster. This 2012 work is an old London double-decker bus that has a human derriere and enormous arms coming out of it. Every day, it does push-ups from 3 to 3.30, so time your visit well. It also makes grunting sounds as it works out. If the temperature is under 5 degrees Celsius, however, it won't run. Also, it's a bit old and it's wearing out, and someday it won't work at all, so go sooner rather than later. Cherney built this for the 2012 Olympics in London, where it sat outside the Business Design Center in Islington, which was renamed Czech House for the duration of the exhibit. When it came back here to Prague, there was kind of a kerfuffle as to where it should go. PM Bobbish put it in Old Town Square, but no one liked that, and so now it's out near the headquarters for Bobbish's company, Agro. 
It's also right near a nice park, Park u Hodovska Tvrdze, or Park at the Hodov Fortress, which has a disc golf course. This is kind of a golf play with frisbees, a kid's playground, outdoor grills for people to use, more public artwork, and a restaurant named Pavilion that serves sandwiches, salads, pizzas, daily specials, sweets, wine, and beer from the small breweries Prestitsa over near Pilsen and Mali Janek from the bohemian town of Yinza. If you're coming here from Gallery Golf Hostivarz, you could take the 125 bus about half an hour and get off at either the Chodovska Tvrz or Chodovets stop and then walk a spell. Or you could take the 183 bus from the same stop to the end station, Haya Metro, and then hop the 197 bus to the Benkova stop. You have to change buses, but it's less walking. When you're leaving, if you take a bus from here to the Hodov Metro Station, you will be at the Westfield Hodov Shopping Center, which is one of the largest in Prague. Lots of shops, a multiplex cinema, and three dozen places to get food or drink. So again, you could kill an awful lot of time. And the last piece is called Beetle. A 2020 work out at BB Centrum, out in Prague 4, next to the Microsoft headquarters in the D1 motorway. This is a life-sized, articulated, segmented Porsche 911 writhing on a giant pin like a big bug. It stands about 17 meters high and it's 8 meters across. The pinkish-purple laminate work weighs 10 tons. If you want to add this to the tour from the London Booster, you could take the metro from Chodov, which is the red line, line C, to Budjevitska Station, and then either walk, because it's just on the other side of the highway overpass, or you could take a bus one stop to Brumlovka, and then walk back towards the highway to the corner. Those are your outlying areas. Part two is the center. So we're not going to start exactly in the center, but close enough with the babies on Zhishkov Television Tower. The 216-meter Zhishkov Television Tower was started by the communists in 1985, but not finished till 1992 after the Velvet Revolution. Frequently near the top of ugly structures in the world lists, it's a weird, outdated vision of high-tech. Cherny made a giant baby, 350 centimeters by 260 centimeters out of fiberglass for the Chicago Museum of Modern Art back in 1995 and also one for the Czech Embassy in London. And as the year 2000 approached, he agreed to make 10 more for this TV tower in Prague back when Prague was one of nine European capitals of culture. The babies don't have faces, but sort of a punched in pattern that resembles a barcode. Reactions to them vary. Some people love them, other people find them alienating and creepy. The ten toddlers were supposed to be temporary, but Proggers liked them, so they stayed up. But unfortunately, they had not been designed to remain up there for such an extended period of time, and they started to fall apart. They were removed and then replaced with sturdier versions in 2019. The originals weighed 190 kilograms each, but the new ones clock in at 350 kilograms each. That's a big baby. He's made more babies uh, out on Kampa Island, which we'll visit in a little bit here, and also in the courtyard of the old work institute, the Urjad Praza on Sefertova, across the street from the Victoria Zhishkov football stadium, but that's not really open to the public. He has more babies crawling around a huge sandbox in Palm Springs, California, and also in Middlekirk, Belgium. The easiest way to get here is to take the metro, getting off at Namiesti Jirzi Hozipodjebrad, which is Green Line, Line A, and then walk a couple blocks to the tower. However, if you're coming directly from the London Booster, you could take the 136 bus from the Hodovet stop to Olshanska Namiesti and then walk up the hill four blocks. If you're coming from the Beetle at BB Centrum, go back to Budivitska Metro, go to Museum, transfer, and then get off at Yuzhihozhi Podjebrad, or you can get off at Ipe Pavlova and then take the 11 or 13 tram. This is a happening neighborhood. It's got lots of great pubs, restaurants, bakeries. The tower is next to the old Jewish cemetery in Prague, which was established in 1680 and is free to visit. Right under the tower, there's the quite modern Miminu, which means like little baby garden restaurant. A classic place to grab a pint is Usadu on the unusually round Skropova Namiesti, just a block away. If you're hungry, think about trying Taverna Olympus over on Kubelikova, probably the best Greek in town, or Ukorelu for some American meat Czech 
goodies and a very good beer list on the corner of Kubelikova and Havalova. You're also not far from Regrevi Sadi, which has some spectacular views of Prague's old town and castle. On the way there, you can pop into the tavern, which started the hamburger craze here in Prague. Both the tavern and Ukarelu are run by Lori and Dean, who were interviewed in a previous episode. Anyway, from here, you're going to make your way to Wenceslas Square. If you feel like it, you could walk. It takes about a half an hour or so going down Vinohradska. Along the way, you'll pass the National Museum and the original statue that the next work is a satire of. At the end of Wenceslas Square, in front of the museum, there is a statue of St. Wenceslas sitting on a horse. It's a classic meeting place for proggers who will frequently say, meet me at the horse, and sometimes even meet me under the horse, which means under the horse's tail. Keep going down Wenceslas Square, which looks more like a boulevard than a square. It used to be the horse market after all, until about halfway down and then go left into Lucerna Passage. In there, you will see a copy of the famous statue that you just passed outside on Wenceslas Square, except here, Wenceslas is riding a dead horse who hangs upside down with its tongue hanging out. Czerny said he meant it to express that the Czech Republic, at least back around the turn of the century, was not functioning, and yet people still had this, well, everything's fine attitude. Czerny's arrangement with the city is that this sculpture will hang here until the day the country once again becomes a constitutional monarchy. So, forever, basically. This 1999 work is made of polystyrene foam held together with epoxy. Not made out of metal, and it's not nearly as heavy as it looks. However, you still wouldn't want it to fall on you. Lucerna Passage was built by Václav Havel's grandfather and has a number of shops, bakeries, places to eat, even theaters, a well-regarded cinema, and a fantastic cafe upstairs from the First Republic where you can have coffee and a cake or a beer and look out the window at the dead horse. Now we're going to make our way to K, the head of Franz Kafka, a 2014 piece, and now one of the top destinations for tourists in Prague. Make your way on foot to behind the Quadrio Shopping Center at the Narodnitschida Metro Station. Here you'll see Czerny's 10.6 meter tall head of Franz Kafka, made of 42 motorized layers of mirrored metal that rotate together and independently so that the face breaks apart and then comes back together again. The whole sequence takes about 20 minutes to complete all the different permutations. The head has a kilometer of cables inside of it and weighs 45 tons. In the planning stages, it took 2,039 technical drawings to convey everything to the team that built it. Now, back in 2009, there was a kind of a great but also kind of a ganky covered marketplace here from the old days. The city decided to tear it down and redo the metro station and put up a new building, which turns out to be this Quadrio Center. Cherney was asked to be considered doing a large-scale outdoor artwork here, so he suggested a huge fountain of 30 bronze penises of different sizes surrounding a larger 18-meter tall bronze penis, all of which would squirt water. The penises would also have digital displays and would feature whichever politician was in the news that day. He actually meant this as a joke, and the city passed on the idea. No surprise. So instead, he did this big head, which is a version of an earlier work from 2007 called Metal Morphosis, which is at the Whitehall Corporate Center in a South Carolina suburb of Charlotte, North Carolina, across from the Honorary Czech Embassy. This is a very similar piece, except it sits in a reflecting pool and water shoots from its mouth from time to time. Now we're going to go see Women on a House just nearby. I think this is from 2004 or so, but I'm not sure. So go around the Quadrio building towards the metro station entrance, cross Spalina with the trams to Ostrovny Street. Keep going two blocks and you come to the Václav Havel Library at number 13, which is housed in the neoclassical Demuv Palace, sometimes also called the Schwarzenbergsky Dom because it's owned by Karl Schwarzenberg, who was a well-known person and who ran for president some years ago. He was also a former cultural minister for the Czech Republic and a friend of Václav Havel's. The way Czerny tells it, Schwarzenberg asked him if he'd do some art for the building. Like what? asked Czerny. How about some naked women? was the reply. <laughs> 
So, Cherney did three statues of naked women, but with street lamp heads up on the roof. One holding a beer, another one holding, I think it's the Schwarzenberg coat of arms, and the third one grabbing a rifle the wrong way, because Carl likes hunting, says Mr. Cherney. Recently, he added a fourth statue around the corner. From here, we're going to go see the Sigmund Freud work from 1997. Go down Vorschilska up to Narodnitschida. You'll know it's a busy street. Take a right. Go past where the massacre that sparked off the 1989 Velvet Revolution happened in Red Uta Jazz Club, where Bill Clinton played saxophone with Havel back in 1993. At the corner, on your right, there'll be the communist-era department store that's now called Tesco Me or My. Go left on Na Perstinje. Walk past Umedviku, one of the great beer halls in the center, which we talked about in a previous episode, and keep going until you get to the spot where Na Perstinje turns into Husava, but you could also go left onto Betlemsk and When you're there, look up, and you'll see a statue of Sigmund Freud hanging from a pole by one hand with his other hand casually in his trousers pocket. At the time, Cherney had been thinking about what the new millennium might bring, and he thought Freud was one of the main intellectual figures of the 20th century, and so he might be sort of just symbolically hanging around, above it all, looking on. This work actually went on an international tour, but when it got to the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan in the United States, onlookers thought it was an actual person in distress hanging on for dear life and called firefighters to rescue the man. It was returned after some time to this spot here in Prague. Now we're going to make our way to Divado na Zabradli, where Václav Havel used to work. Turn left, go on to Betlemsk Namisti, go along the right side to Na Prstkova, and then go right on to Srebrna. You'll get to Anenska Namisti. On the left is Right next to the main entrance of the theater, there's a bronze plaque in honor of Václav Havel, who started working as a stagehand at this theater before going on to become a playwright himself, and later president of Czechoslovakia and then president of the Czech Republic. The plaque shows a partial CV for Havel. He was a stagehand here from 1950 to 1965, it says, and then president of the Republic from 1989 to 2003. There's also a spilled shot glass, because he was a little bit of a drinker, an ashtray, because Havel smoked like crazy, and a pencil with a teeny tiny Havel bust instead of an eraser. Funding for the plaque came from private donations, but the theater got so much money they started refusing any more donations, and Cherney asked for no royalties from this piece. From here, go to the corner of the theater building, and stuck on a drain pipe is a weird chrysalis kind of thing that Cherny did for the theater's 50th anniversary in 2008. It's called Embryo. At night, it lights up, and what's inside exactly is hard to discern, but that name, Embryo, makes a lot of people think like, yeah, maybe it's some kind of creepy, weird, misshapen fetus in there. It is purposefully unclear. When the work was unveiled in 2008, it wasn't really getting sufficient attention, so the director of the theater started spreading the rumor, which was totally untrue, that theater workers found it kind of disturbing, and maybe they'd have to cover it up. Journalists took this and wrote about it, and this prompted all sorts of people to talk about it. Should we or should we not cover up disturbing works of art, etc., 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 and the work got more attention, so the little ploy worked. We're now going to cross the river and find one of his most infamous pieces. Your best bet, actually, is to go ahead and brave the crowds and get onto Charles Bridge. While crossing, kind of glance off to the left and remember that back in 2013, Cherney snuck a sculpture out onto a barge in the middle of the river between Charles Bridge and the National Theater, a 10-meter tall styrofoam purple hand giving an enormous middle finger to the castle. Cherney lists it on his website as a solo exhibition titled Gesture, actually. That's what other people call it. His website has a much ruder name for it. And yes, it was aimed squarely at current President Milos Zeman, but it was temporary and it's gone now. 
Anyway, cross the Charles Bridge, take a right when you get to the Malastrana side, onto Ulujitskaho Semenaja, walk past English language bookshop Shakespeare and Sons, where you can, among other things, pick up a copy of Karen O'Rourke's Dog Walks of Prague book, which was mentioned in a previous episode. Keep going past the narrowest street in Prague to the Museum Franz Kafka, or Franz Kafka Museum, in a courtyard at a corner. There you will find the David Cherney Fountain that has been called a number of things. Streams, pissing men, or just piss. The 2004 work is two metal men made of layers, kind of like the Kafka head he'd make later, that can swivel back and forth. They are peeing into a water basin shaped like the Czech Republic. Cherney said it represents a typical Czech conversation where one side is always trying to one-up the other one, the proverbial pissing contest. Another feature is that people could SMS a text message to a certain phone number, and then the two figures would piss that message out into the water basin. I don't know if that is still functional or not. I think I remember reading that they had to discontinue it because, well, some of the messages were pretty off color. While over here in Malastrana, we're going to go see one of Czerny's earliest works, which he made even before the infamous painting of the pink tank. And this is Quo Vadis, a 1989-1990 work that is a Trabant car on human legs. The Trabant was the classic East German car, and the piece is a reference to the mass exodus of East Germans here in Prague in late 1989, with scores of them trying to climb the walls of the U.S. Embassy Gardens back when Shirley Temple Black, yes, Shirley Temple, was the ambassador. The sculpture sat in Old Town Square for a bit, but then it was moved into the garden of the German Embassy, which is in the Lobkowitzki Palace in Malastrana. To get there from Pissing Men, backtrack towards the Charles Bridge and then go on to Mostetska, further in away from the river. Continue along the left side of Malastranska Namiesti and then near the end, cut left through a passage to end up at Trzistia. Go right past the U.S. Embassy and Trzistia turns into Vlaszczka. Keep going past the KGB Museum until you get to the German Embassy at number 19. Now, the sculpture's in the gardens behind a big wall. You can't really go in there, but you can get a glimpse of it by continuing past the embassy and taking a left at a side alley after the wall, right across from an old church that's been converted into a hospital. Take that little alley, go uphill a little bit, and you can look over the walls into the garden where Quo Vadis is. Now we're going to go back down towards the river to Kampa Island and get a close-up view of those creepy babies that are crawling all over the Zhishkov TV tower. Backtrack back the way you came towards the Charles Bridge and then go right before the bridge onto Kampa Island, which is separated from the mainland by the Devil's Canal, which has a cool old wooden water wheel in it. It was talked about in a previous episode. Down by the river, outside the Museum Kampa, there are three more of these big baby statues crawling around on the ground so you can get up close and personal. These ones are made of bronze and weigh 800 kilos each. He put these here in 2008. If you keep going down Kampa along the Devil's Canal, you'll see the Mlinska Kavarna, which is an old mill that's now a pub and a cafe, partly run by David Cherny himself. He can frequently be seen hanging out here since he lives nearby. He also designed the next work, which is the 12-meter-long transparent bar top, which has all sorts of bric-a-brac embedded in it. He made this for the bar in 2011. And the last piece in the city center is the torso of a tank, which is a new version of the work that made him famous. So first we need to get off Kampa Island and walk up to Uyezd, which is a busy street with trams on it. Go left to Namiesti Kinski, right when it starts to curve to the right a bit. Along the way, you will pass the weird and wonderful memorial to the victims of communism artwork at the base of Petrin Hill on your right, done by Obram Zobek. This work has had some controversy when it was unveiled in 2002. Famous dissident and president Václav Havel was not invited to the ceremony, but then they hastily added him at the last minute after that was criticized, and then he just refused to come. 
other critics have noticed. By the way, all the figures here are men. And certainly someone really didn't like it because back in November 2003, somebody set off two bombs at the site, damaging one of the statues. It's not by some that it was hardline communist sympathizers, but no one has ever been arrested for the attack. Anyway, go past this and we're here to see David Cherney's work and the side of the artwork that catapulted him to fame. Pink Tank Tank Number 23. It was a Soviet IS-2 tank that sat in this square in front of the court buildings on a big stone pillar. The tank was from World War II, and the square used to be called Namiesti Sovietskich Tankistu, or Square of the Soviet Tank, from 1951 to 1990. Uh, before that, it had a different name, Stefanikovia Namiesti. The tank was declared a national monument by the Czech communists in the 1950s. The communists said the tank was a reminder that the Soviets were the ones who had liberated Czechoslovakia from the Nazis, but of course many people saw it as also a reminder that the Soviets basically called the shots here, even though Czechoslovakia was nominally independent. This especially held true after the 1968 Soviet invasion that ended the Prague Spring. So in February 1990, after the Velvet Revolution, historian Pavel Bielina said there's no reason to still have that tank there and it should be removed. While the authorities dithered, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't, on the night of April 27th, 23-year-old David Cherney painted it pink. He was arrested for it and it was repainted green in time for the May 1st holiday, which was still celebrated. On May 12th, a group of politicians from the Civic Forum political party painted it pink again, knowing that they all had immunity because they were government ministers. A furor ensued and Cherney was finally released and the tank's protected cultural status was removed. In June, the still pink tank was taken to the Air Military Museum Kbili out at Letnyani Airport. Then it went to the Military Technical Museum in less shiny, 60 kilometers south of Prague. Somewhere in all this, the pink pink was removed and the Communist Party actually tried to get its cultural status restored, but they were unsuccessful. Cherny continued working, making iconoclastic artworks such as In God We Trust, which was a 15-foot high cross made of giant dollar bills. Then in 2000, several layers of paint flaked off and so they painted it with a new, fresh coat of pink paint. In 2001, Cherney proposed putting a section of the tank back near where the original one sat, which is where you're standing, but looking like it's sinking into the ground. It was rejected after several politicians, current President Milos Zeman, he who got the finger among them, protested. Zeman's rather famously pro-Russia. In May, this work was installed in a small town between Pardubice and Hradec Kralova to mark the 10th anniversary of Soviet troops leaving the region. And at night, Cherny got that sculpture from that small town and secretly brought it back to Prague and then placed it on the grass here. So there's this partial pink tank looking like it was sinking into the ground. Various legal challenges bopped around for a while, and finally in 2009, it was removed and placed in Cherny's Meat Factory Performance and Art Space in Smichov. But the story wasn't over. On June 18th, 2011, the tank was painted pink again as part of Freedom Week, which marks the 20th anniversary of Soviet troops leaving the area. The 65-ton tank was taken to Prague and placed on a barge in the middle of the river, you know, where that finger was. The turret sticking up, in fact, was sort of like a big pink middle finger aimed at the castle. Some people think that might be where Cherny got the inspiration for his gesture piece. So this tank has stirred plenty of emotions. Those who pine for the good old days of communism, obviously they say it's disrespectful towards the Soviet soldiers who died liberating Czechoslovakia from the Nazis. And of course, some people just thought the whole thing was pretty vulgar. Other people just don't like pink. In 2017, the whole pink tank was placed in front of the Red Church in Brno as part of an exhibition called Tribes 90. A group calling themselves Slushni Lida, or Decent People, covered it with a tarp. They were just so offended. And people later from the Brno Military Club tried to sneak in in the night and paint it green, but they were caught and stopped. Then in 2018, marking the 50th anniversary of the Soviet invasion that ended the Prague Spring, Cherny again placed this partial tank here on Kinsky Square, though this time not pink, just tank colored. The city decided they would allow him to leave it there for a couple of days, but then people liked it and it has stayed much longer, irritating detractors. And there it is, still sitting there across the street from sculptor Jan Lauda's 2002 Fountain of Time. 
If you walk up to the corner, you're no longer in Malastrana, you're in Prague 5 Smichov. And so that begins the third and final part of our tour, which has six pieces. To see the next piece, you need to get to the Futura Gallery in Prague 5 Smichov. From the tank torso, you could walk if you wanted to. It's about one and a half kilometers, um, half an hour, give or take. Or you can go to the Schwanlovo de Vallo bus stop. The theater's right there. You can see it. And take the 176 bus two stops to the Holechkova stop. Futura Gallery is at 49 Holechkova. Czerny has said he wants his work to, quote, attack people, and he loves causing a visceral reaction. In a kind of hard-to-find courtyard behind the gallery, there is his 2003 work, Brown Nosing. Two very tall, naked white figures, five meters high, that's 17 feet high, are bending over, so you just see the back half of them, their heads disappearing into a wall. You climb a tall ladder to their open buttholes, and then you stick your head inside. And in there, you will see a television with loops of the new-at-the-time president, Václav Klaus, and the director of the National Gallery at the time, Milan Knizhak, feeding each other porridge, while Queen's famous song, We Are the Champions, plays on the soundtrack. Now, you'd think that Mr. Knizhak would appreciate this work since he was a member of the international artistic community Fluxus, but he and Czerny had a long-standing feud stemming from the Václav on a Dead Horse work in Lucerna Passage from 1999, and so Czerny said he would never set foot in a national gallery property while Knizhak was director. The gallery, where you can see this, is open Wednesdays through Sundays, 11 to 6 p.m. It is closed Mondays and Tuesdays. Now we have a bit of a trek. Go back down the hill to Svanlovo de Vadlo, either by walking or taking the 176 bus the other way, and there hop either the number 12 or 20 tram, take it six stops to the Lihovar stop. Now you're over by some train tracks and you need to get on the other side of them, slightly uphill. The destination is Meat Factory, a non-profit multifunction contemporary arts center for arts and education that has the largest studio program in the country as well as galleries, live theaters, film, music, bars, and much, much more. It was started in 2001 by Cherny and his two friends, musician and singer David Kohler and stage and screen director Alitza Nellis. It's a great place to hang out for a while, so it's a bit of a pain to get there, but it's worth it. Also, interestingly, right by the Lihovar stop is the old Zlichov distillery, which Cherny is helping convert into a massive art space. So, from the tram stop, your best bet is to walk down the street you're on and then go right onto a small street called Keslarnia, across over the railroad tracks, and then follow it back the direction the tram came from to Meat Factory. It's about a 10-minute walk. It's actually not that hard. Hanging on the outside of the building, you will see the 2007 work Maso, which means meat. These are two full-sized red cars hanging from hooks like cuts of meat. Anyway, you're at Meat Factory, have a drink, see a film, see some art, hang out, do what you like. After this, we're going to leave the Smichov part of Prague 5 for the wilds of Yinonitsa, which is further out in the Prague 5 district. So go back down to the Lihovar tram stop and take a tram back towards the center to the Andiel metro station. Get on the metro and take it to the Yunonitsa metro station. When you get there, take a left out of the metro station onto the walking path that heads northeast up to Volterovo Namiesti. That's with a W. It's about a five minute walk. In a complex of new buildings, it includes the Canadian Medical Center Voltrovka campus and the headquarters of Johnson & Johnson, you will see two of Czerny's works. The 2014 Speederman piece was installed in front of the dancing house back during Signal Fest in October. That's Prague's version of the Festival of Lights. It was sort of a frozen kinetic work. It shows a man in motion, but at a single moment during his high-speed forward journey, with flashing lights coming off of him in lines. The idea was that modern people were developing into something like superheroes in an accelerated life due to the rapid advance of technology. It is now here in front of the Voltrovka Medical Center. Very nearby is Pegas, or Pegasus. 
These are made in 2017 and they're a technological take on the notion of a winged horse. The figures have the back end of a horse, but the front end is an airplane propeller engine. I am told that the propellers are functional. All right, we have one more little spot to go to to see the last two pieces. We need to get over by the Czech Photo Center. From here, the most direct way is to take the 137 bus from the Nadraji Yinunitsa stop, six stops to the Nova Butovica metro station. Or you could make your way on foot back to the Yinunitsa metro station, take the metro one stop to Nova Butovica, however you want. From there, you're going to make your way on foot to the Czech Photo Center. In front, you'll see a weird and creepy 12-meter-tall sculpture called Trifot from 2016. Chani says he was inspired by the idea of the giant walking plants from the Day of the Triffids, but this is an Orwellian mechanical harbinger of doom that almost seems to be hoofing it from Nova Butovica metro station to the next station over, which is Hurka. It has moving eyes that also contain functioning cameras. As the eyes move around, it films and photographs people walking past and then displays those images on nearby digital screens. Sometimes the camera eyes will fix on one person and follow that person for a while. Don't worry, none of the footage or images are recorded. Once they are displayed, they are lost from memory. There are also some other technological objects nearby as well that have information about the Czech Photo Center and the exhibitions that they hold. Right next to this creepy thing is the 2018 Cyber Dog. This is a wine bar and restaurant built to look kind of like the containers one might use to transport materials to the moon, assembled in a shape that I guess vaguely looks like a dog sitting down with its head up attentively. Inside, you will find the first robotic bartender in Europe. There's one in Japan, so they beat us to it. It is a robotic mechanical arm that pours your wine orders. There's also an automated cart that brings the food that you order to the tables all by itself on special tracks. You have 90 seconds when it gets to your table to get your stuff off the cart before it returns to the kitchen. The whole place seats about 40 people. Now look, since you're already way out here in Prague 5, I have a bonus charity piece for you if you're willing to make the trip. And this is the monument to the Russian Liberation Army in Shepoye, way out of the edge of Prague 5. Together from Cyberdog, you need to get back on the metro, either go back to the Nova Butovica station or walk down to the Hurka station. You're already about a third of the way there anyway. And then either go to the Luka station, where you get out and take the 174 bus to Zepoyeski Namiesti, that's five stops, or you can go one more metro station to Stodulki and take the 130 or 246 bus, four stops to the same stop, Zepoyeski Namiesti. Walk down the square, which isn't a square, it's really just a road, until the road splits into a Y, with Smikovska going off to the right and Katrebonitsum going off to the left. At the joint of the Y, there's a little flat area with a plaque and a metal pole, like a, a light pole or a signpost. On top of the pole is a teeny tiny T-34 tank with an even teenier and tinier German military helmet on top of it. This is a memorial marking the 75th anniversary of the Prague Uprising and Czechoslovakia's liberation from the Nazis. It should be known that the Russian Liberation Army soldiers sometimes wore German helmets that they had stolen so they could kind of blend in while they were conducting sabotage operations. The plaque calls the Russian Liberation Army collaborationists since some of their soldiers had collaborated with the Prague locals during the Prague Uprising. However, that word has many of the same connotations in Czech that it does in English, and this has raised some eyebrows. What are you saying? Usually one collaborates with an unwelcome occupying power. In this case, it's the Nazis, but let's not forget the Russians did occupy Prague in 1968 after quelling the Prague Spring. So what is this plaque trying to say? That Russians were also collaborating with the Nazis in as much as that they also oppressed the Czech people? Are they saying pro-Russian politicians were collaborators? 
There's been a lot of thinking and a lot of discussion over this one single word choice, which I'm sure was entirely the point. The Russian embassy has protested the memorial, calling it a mockery of memory, especially of the 300 Russian soldiers who died in the fighting during the liberation of Prague. Now, much to do has been made in the press about the anonymous artist who is behind this piece, but in fact, it was totally David Czerny. In fact, he says that, okay, they didn't make really a huge fanfare about it, but they didn't really try and hide the fact that it was his either. After all, he was there at the unveiling on April 30th, 2020, and that makes this his most recent work in Prague. However, he's done plenty of other things around the country and plenty of things in other countries, and a lot of his future projects are architectural in nature. Our next episode, which marks the one-year anniversary of the Prague Times podcast, is an interview with David Czerny about some of his large-scale future projects for the city of Prague. So make sure to check in here in two weeks for that. Thank you for listening to this episode of Prague Times. If you liked this episode, be sure to like it or share it and tell your friends. Check us out on all of our social media platforms for extra goodies as well. Until next time. This has been Prague Times.